سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا اللهم أخرجنا من ظلمات الوهم وادخلنا في نور العلم وجمل أخلاقنا بالحلم اللهم اهدنا واهد بنا واجعلنا سببا لمن اهتدى يا رب العالمين اللهم اجعل جلساتنا هذه خالصة لوجهك الكريم وارزقنا الإخلاص في القول والعمل بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وعنده مفاتح الغيب لا يعلمها إلا هو ويعلم ما في البر والبحر وما تسقط من ورقة إلا يعلمها ولا حبة في ظلمات الأرض ولا رطب ولا يابس إلا في كتاب مبين سبحانك لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم ثم أما بعد نبدأ اليوم إن شاء الله تعالى الربع الأخير من إحياء علوم الدين After finishing, we start today, inshallah, the last quarter of the book, Ihya Alum al-Din, Revival of the Sciences of the Deen. Whom the Alumat said, if every single book of Ilm vanished, disappeared tomorrow, and all what we have is just the Quran and the books of Hadith, and this book, the whole Deen will come back. If you take all the books of Deen, other than the Quran and the books of Hadith, and this one, and you burn them, and you throw them in the ocean. But you still have Ihya Alum al-Din, after the Quran and the books of Hadith, the whole ilm comes back. And they also said, من لم يقرأ الإحياء فليس من الإحياء. Whoever did not read the Ihya is not among the Ahya. Ihya is the name of the book, Ihya Alum al-Din. Ahya means the alive, the life book. It is not among the living. It is dead. And how many people passed away, they are not living with us on the faith of the earth, but they are living with us. Including Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the first. وَعَلَمُوا أَنَّ فِيكُمْ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ Know that Rasulullah sallam is among you. Allah says in Surah Al-Fajurah. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is with us. All his teachings, all the sunnah, all the medicine, all the means of success and victory and peace and happiness is between us, is with us, by his soul. And he's alive. Rasulullah is alive. Different living, yes. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, وَلَا تَحْسَبَنَّ الَّذِينَ قُتِلُوا فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ أَمْوَاتِ بَلْ أَحْيَا Do not think that those who was martyred in the path of Allah are dead. But they are alive. They are alive. This is for the martyrs. Imagine Rasulullah and he will be dead while these people are alive. If the shuhada are alive, is it Rasulullah be worthy more being alive? But he's not alive like us. That is among us. By his sunnah. And there are lots of ulama are with us. With their ilm, the ilm they left behind for us to learn and to succeed with. All the ulama of the deen, of the sharia, Jabr ibn Hayyan, or Hassan ibn Haytham, or Imam al-Ghazali, or Imam al-Nawawi, all these people left sciences behind, and now the West has taken all their sciences, and they became more advanced while we are sitting. We relaxed and we sat back. والقاعدة المعروفة من لم يتقدم تأخر. There's a basic rule of thumb who will ever not improve or move forward, he will move back. 
Suppose we are the masters of sciences. We know all sciences between our, all technology and science is between our hands now. And we were satisfied, halas. We'll not seek further, we'll not do further research or development or seek, halas, we're satisfied at our level. Do you think we'll stay at our level? No, we'll go behind. When we تقدم تأخر. We'll ever not move forward, we'll move back. Look at it like as if people are running in a race, in a race track. The one who is, at the, at the, uh, is ahead of all of other competitors, is ahead. Once he stops, do you think he will stay at the head? Once he stops, he will become the last. Because others are running. And I gave another analogy before. Imagine that we, your status as a believer is like a ball on a tilted surface like this. If you don't keep pushing the, the ball upwards, it will run down quickly. So if you are satisfied with your level of deen, you will go backwards. If you are satisfied with your akhlaq, you will go backwards. You will become the, soon you will become the worst of akhlaq, of manners. They say, I have good manners. Alhamdulillah, I'm truthful, I'm honest, I'm humble, I have all these qualities. If you once you become satisfied with your character traits and qualities, you will become, by time, you will keep going down until you become the worst person ever. This is a matter of continuous struggle. See, Rasulullah himself was doing seven times istighfar or not. He says, Wallahi inni la atubu ila Allah fi al-yawmi akthar min sab'ina marra. Rasulullah himself was saying, I'm doing istighfar more than 70 times a day. Who is doing? The Prophet of Allah, the perfect human. <coughs> the only perfect human. He's doing istighfar. Why is it? Because of his ma'asim? Because he's doing uh, minor sins or major sins? Astaghfirullah billah hashala. Hashah sallallahu alayhi wa No. Because of this concept. If you, if, if you think that khalas, you've got it all, فَيَنْظُ الرَّجُلْ يَتَعَلَّمْ وَيَتَعَلَّمْ فَإِنْ ظَنَّ أَنَّهُ عَلِمْ فَقَدْ بَدَى يَجْرِ A person will keep learning and learning and learning. Once he believed that he's a alim, he's a scholar, at this point he started to become an ignorant person. A jail. Yes, he's going back, downwards. Quickly. What he built over 50 years, he can lose it in five days. It is very hard to build a wall. It takes time. See, to build a wall, you get the, the level and make sure the wall is upright. And how long it will take you to bring it down to scratch? No. So that's why if you think that you have the best of akhlaq, you have the worst of akhlaq. If you think that you are a alim, you are a jail. So there are those dead people, or people who passed away, but they are still living with us, and there are people who are walking among us, but they are dead. وَكَفَى شَرَفًا لِمَنْ يَهِبَ الْحَيَاةُ لِشِبْهِ مَنْ قَدْ مَاتُ قال الشيخ محمد زكي إبراهيم في قصيدة البقاء آخر شيء قال يعني قبل فاته في أسبوع الإمام الكبير الشيخ محمد زكي إبراهيم just a few days before he passed away he made a poem called I couldn't remember all of it but he said وكفى بالمرء وكفى به شرفا من يهب الحياة لشبه ما قد مات. Someone was saying how come all these dead people are getting all this money? You know the donation boxes in the masajid of the Salih people, all Salih people, Imam Hussein al Hussein in Egypt, actually collect millions in the donation boxes in this masajid. Everyone wants to go and make a donation in the Masjid of Sayyidina Al-Hussain, or Sayyidina Imam Al-Shafi'i, or Sayyidina Afisa, or... Uh, so someone was saying, how come all these dead people are getting all these millions while they're living, not, not giving you getting a few parts? He said, it is enough honor for those who give life, for those who are almost dead. 
So the ulama, Imam Ghazali and others, they are giving life for those who are, are almost dead. Many of what you see walking between us are actually dead. Hmm? And one of the scholars said, رب حي كان رخام القبر مسكنه ورب ميت على أقدامه انتصر رب حي كان رخام القبر مسكنه ورب ميت على أقدامه انتصر Perhaps there is a living person whose place of residence is his grave is living and he is able شوف كده مات ابن آدم انقطع عن عمله إلا من ثلاث واحدة منها علم ينتفع به. When the son of Adam passes away, all his deeds are cut off from him except three deeds. We all know this hadith. Hadith sahih. One of them is a علم, a beneficial knowledge that he leaves behind. طيب فرب حي كان رخام القبر. Maybe a dead person, a living person whose place of residence is actually his grave. ورب ميت على أقدامه انتصر and maybe the dead person he is still standing in his feet. If you look at him and you are looking to a dead person. لأن الموت موت القلب. The death is actually death of the heart. Once the heart is dead, there is no use of this human. It doesn't matter if he is still alive or dead. So if you read the book of الإحياء فليس من الإحياء. Number three is this book of إحياء has got after reading many books, the solution and the medicine to our day-to-day -day lives. Like here in 2013, in Sydney, but not 2013 yet, in four weeks will be 2013, inshallah. So as at December 2012, the solutions are there. Just before the class, we were talking the uh, Mashur uh, of Stoke said, oh, yes, we don't attend classes because you know the family issues and pressures and life pressures, you know, work and things that distract us. We don't. I said, no, because of these problems, we are having these problems because we are not attending these classes. If the fikr, if the understanding, if the perception is. I will start attending classes after my life becomes rosy. Becomes rosy. Plus, when I don't have any marital problems, when I don't have any family problems, when I don't have any risk problems, financial problems, when I don't have any work problems, when I don't have any health problems, I will start coming. I'll be regular on classes. That's fake. It's a, yeah, a false claim. Absolutely, what? In fact, the way to solve these problems is by attending this, not particularly this class. I'm not saying that this is the class. But giving this issue the importance, the top priority. A top priority. Knowing that this is that will solve your problem. Not, not, not necessarily my class. If, if my classes are halas, I call, let's not have a class here. Not let me not give a class here. But my advice is for me, I need to go and look for it. A reliable shape who has a mentor and he has a solution and a roadmap to the solution. And let's try it and give it high priority. Only then we can improve. But without taking steps, so this book has got read it, 40 chapters. Four quarters, every quarter, ten chapters. See, the second quarter that we spend a full year in, we finished only half of it, and then we moved on. The principles of marriage, the guidelines of marriage, if the husband and wife read this chapter, understood it, and implemented it, even 50%, or at least even 10%, even 10-20%, but she should be conscious and intended to implement 100%. So this, this is the solution implemented 100%. But then after struggling, they implemented only 10. Their life will change dramatically, will improve dramatically. Only one chapter of marriage, food, 
a chapter of food, how to eat. All this obesity problem there. Help. Read the chapter and implement it. Try to implement it. So like a solution, how to, how to raise children. This is the chapter of raising children. Or every, every time officer I'm making phone calls, what is this, my child, the common problems. And where are the answers? But there is no one, everyone thinks, where is the solution? I don't want to solve my kids are driving me crazy. And, but if you are putting your head like the ostrich, you know, and, uh, but you're not making, you're not taking the medicine. You are very short-sighted. You say, I can't see, I can't see. You have put on your glasses and you see. But you don't want to put the glasses and you complain about not seeing. You can't see. Put on the glasses. So the solution is here. But who reads it? Who knows that even the solution is in this book? Who even knows that this book exists? Ask 90% of the Muslims. Do you know Fihya Alum al-Din? So what? You see in Sydney. And go in Sydney. Go to school, go to school. I was today in a, fu in a function, 20,000 school kids going to public school. Ask the 20,000. You know how would be? I'll be surprised if you get 10 out of the 20,000. I'll be 10 of them know the how would be. Ask their parents. I'll be surprised as if 1% of the parents know that this book exists. 1%. 200 pair families will know, I'll be surprised, I'll be happy. 1%. Heard about the book. Out of the 1%, ask them, do you know that this solution exists inside the book? How many would know? Maybe 0 0.1, 0 0.01%. And then we want success from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We want victory from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We want to have dignity and karama in the Australian community. When we are banging our head, how can we get our karam, how we get to stop the abuse of the media and the, and the opportunistic politicians, and, and we are doing it to ourselves. We have the solution to that, and we are running after fake means to, to get success and victory. We'll never get it. Uh, so this is the, uh, uh, just a review, because I see new faces today, so just a review about some of the, some of the benefits of the book. Today, inshallah, we'll start the fourth quarter, which is again 10 chapters. It'll take a full year to finish. So today, inshallah, we'll start with the chapter one of, uh, of this, of the quarter four, of the fourth quarter, which is, who knows the four quarters? So the book is four parts. The first quarter was telling you that well, the was focusing on the ibadat, the basic ten ibadat, including the four practical pillars of Islam, the salah, zakah, salam, and hajj. Assuming khalas, everyone said the first pillar. So these are four, and then the dua as the ibadah, qiraat al-Quran as the ibadah, and so on. So the nine, ten ibadat. Quarter two focused on mu'amalat, the day-to-day -day Muslim life, life matters. Eating, friendship, raising children, marriage, preparing for marriage. All this, the day-to-day -day life. And we spend more time on this because we touch on our day-to-day -day life issues. It's full solutions in the book. And then the third quarter was about the muhlikat the bad character traits, the destructive character traits. Ten chapters, ten destructive character traits. If you want to destroy a community, spread those ten diseases. And the community will collapse. Why we are studying them? To avoid it. If I know that this is a disease, and this is a disease, and this is a disease, and the Imam tells you how to protect yourself from this disease, or how to treat yourself if you already have this disease. So 
So if you are infected with this disease, you cure yourself. He gives you practical steps, one, two, three, four. And if you are not infected with this disease, at least you protect yourself from it. You know what to do to protect yourself from this disease. And even better, if you have that level of ilm and understanding and comprehensive knowledge and you studied other sciences, fiqh and usul and manahij and uh, and all these sciences, you can become a doctor. Not only cure yourself or protect yourself, you can even cure others. You can advise others and take their hands to cure them, to, to get rid of this disease. So this was quarter three. Quarter four was, which we start today, is the munajia or tahleel. Is now the beautiful character trait, the sweet character trait, how which you need to now after you clean your heart from the bad character trait, how you sweeten your heart instead, because you cannot sweeten something if it's already dirty. Excuse me for the, for the uh, like if you have a cup, a glass that has got coffee in it, and you just drank coffee, not good. Can you put uh, fruit juice in it and drink? No, the coffee is only that the fruit juice will always taste awful. Right? What you do, you just wash it, and then you this is the takhleya. This is the third part was washing the heart so that you can sweeten it with with the sweet character traits. Exactly what you do when you read Quran. What do you do when you first read Quran? أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم. so أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم استخلي. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم is تحلي. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم أعوذ بالله في السيف في جوف from Allah from the with Allah from the شيطان. you cleaning yourself from the شيطان. and then you sweeten with the name of Allah بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم. before so now we are in the quarter of the tahliya and the first thing that the tahliya starts with is tawbah is a tawbah tawbah everyone knows tawbah right anyone doesn't know tawbah what tawbah what tawbah is tawbah repentance repent back right so he he will start now with the with the Tawbah, فيقول الإمام رحمه الله ونفعنا بعلم الشريفة وبكم في الدارين أمين التوبة عن الذنوب بالرجوع إلى ستار العيوب وعلام الغيوب إلى ستار العيوب وعلام الغيوب مبدأ طريق السالكين وأول أقدام المريدين. He said that the Tawbah is in 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 the language in the Arabic language you have Taba, Wanaba, Waab. Taba, when if it's too technical, I just get past and go straight away to Taba. But all the three terms means to to return. Taba means or Alba or means to return. Taba is a logical return from a bad thing to a good thing, from bad logic, bad character traits, bad qualities to good qualities. This is Taba. From the sins, from the ma'asi to the good deeds. Aba means to turn from a physical place. Mm. To say Aba means to return. It's always return. And likewise, Naba, and without going too much into Arabic language, there are subtle differences between them. But let us focus on the Tawbah, which is returning from sin to, to good deeds. Or at least stopping the the sins from from doing bad deeds to at least not doing anything. So a web is a better person than ta. A web is at a higher level. A web could be going back from not doing anything, or from go, doing good deeds to doing even better deeds. نعم العبد إنه أواب. 
the awab is a bit, you read it in the Quran. So awab is usually from a better place to an even better uh, maqam station. So tawbah is returning back from sins ila sattar al ayub wa alam al ayub to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who covered you, covered all your bad qualities. It's Kareem. He didn't expose you. He covered you, khalaf. So you just have adab with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He covered you so far. So khalaf finish. And there is a story that Prophet Musa alayhi salam for days or months there was absolute drought, no rain. So he asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we are suffering from rain. So he told him, it is because of the sins of one person among you, I prevented rain from falling. Because of a sinful person among you. Because of his sins, I stopped the rain. So I will not give you rain until this person gets out. First thing tells us that when, when there is some people who are in deep sin, this prevent the barakah. Prevent the risk. Whole community pay the price. Why? The community is not enjoying the good and forbidding the falsehood. They're not standing for the haq and stopping the falsehoods, stopping the evil. Hmm? Even if they are good but in themselves, but they're not doing anything else, it doesn't, it's not my business. If everyone says it's not my business, and leaving the evil to spread, although he's good, he will pay the price. Allah says in Surah Hud, verse number 117, Allah would have destroyed the villages so long the people are not not salihin good people not muslihun means the people who are enjoying the good and forbidding the evil resisting the evil standing for the haq standing for the right thing <coughs> so the and when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent a malak to destroy a whole village. He went to destroy the whole village and he said, Allah, there is, he found someone who is very salih, prays and fast and doesn't do any sin. So he went back to Allah and said, Allah, I went to destroy the village, but I found a person who is, mashallah, very, very salih. Well, he said, start with him. Destroy him first. Because he closed his door and he never said a word of harm. So it's not your If you think that you are, you and your family are good people, you are closing the door, and you think you are safe, just a matter of time when evil will come and knock your door, and will enter by force. So you have to be proactive. You have to go and say the, the, the best plan for defense is to attack. Type. <coughs> so the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, I will not give you rain until this person gets out. For Sayyidina Musa, he gathered all the children of Israel. Seventy thousand. And then he said, Oh Allah, how can I call seventy thousand? No one will hear me. Or maybe only the first row will hear me. وَقَالَ عَلَيْكَ النِّدَاءُ وَعَلَيْنَا الْبَلَاءُ This calling is among you, is, is your responsibility. And delivering the message is my responsibility, is my job, is my, I'll take care of it. It is on me. So he called, and the 70,000 people heard him. He said, this is what happened. We have been in drought because of a sinful person among us. And Allah will, be, all of us will be destroyed if this person doesn't get out. Halas, it is either he gets out or, the, or all of us die. So this person, he felt that he is in a really difficult situation. He will either get out and everyone will know him, that uh, because of you have been suffering, or they may kill him even. But if, he's, if he didn't get out, he will die also. 
and not only himself, he will die and all people will, will die. So this person, under this situation, he said, Oh Allah, if, Allah, if you cover me this time, that will be the end of it, and I, this is a sincere repentance and tawbah. And I will never do these things again. It will be on himself. Because he is, in either way, he is he's doomed. He made sincere tawbah. And then rain started to fall. It started pouring. So Sayyidina Musa, with dua to Rasulullah, Oh Allah, no one came out, yet the rain came. I said the person made a sincere tawbah and I accepted it. So I said, Oh Allah, let us know this person. So we thank him, yeah, and he was the reason of, but now he is a salih person, he is the cause of the rain. I said, Oh Prophet Musa, I covered him when he was disobeying me. Will I expose him when he is now my, my, a, good, a good person, a good slave? And then that was obeying me, and he did, 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 did it. So this is one of the problems of not having tawbah, and the benefits of having tawbah. Right? <coughs> Imam says, Imam Ghazali says, to understand the essence of tawbah. What is it? Yeah, let's go deep and understand the essence of tawbah. أن التوبة عبارة عن معنى ينتظم من ثلاثة أمور مرتبة علم وحال وفعل وكل واحد يقتضي الذي يليه اقتراض سنة الله تعالى في ملكه He said that this توبة the essence of توبة can be understood by understanding three meanings one is the علم to, to understand and to know what tawbah is, this is knowledge. But is knowledge enough? Like if you study medicine, does it mean that you become healthy? If you read the best book of diet, will you lose weight? So trust me, <laughs> no. I read all this other <coughs> So learning in itself, let's go to my manage bah. Hatatara to manage bah, to look to the bah, to Jamaic bah. So to understand what is Tauba is necessary but not sufficient condition. As we say in mathematics, we have things that do what we say necessary but not sufficient condition. Yeah, for a square to be a square, to have a right angle, four right angles, is necessary for a square, but not sufficient. Every square has got four right angles, but not every four right angle shape is a square. We have a rectangle. That is, rectangles are also so necessary. So the ilm is necessary, but not sufficient condition. Right, so knowledge is number one. And then from knowledge, you have to move to Hal. Hal, which is an internal state. You have to move to an internal state by applying this knowledge to your internal state. Number two, step two. And then step three is to apply it externally. So you know, apply it internally, and then apply it physically. So knowledge, internal state, physical doing. Three things in a water, what's called waterfall approach. As for the ilm, amma al-ilm. Amma al-ilm fa'o ma'arifatu a'idham darar al-dhunub wa kawnuha hijaban bayna al-abdi wa bayna kulli mahboob. It's to know number one of the ilm. And as Imam al-Ghazali said before, Every medicine is made up of two main ingredients. علم العمل to understand, to know, and to apply the knowledge. Right? So the علم to, to, under, to know here, to know the complications of sins. When you do sins. <coughs> it was narrated that Shaykh al-Islam and Shaykh al-Jamal al-Azhar, al-Imam al-Allam al-Hujjah, Ibn Hajar al-Asqalani, 
was the Sheikh of Islam, Sheikh al the Sheikh of Jamal Azhar, uh, approximately 500 years ago. He was coming into the, going into the Masjid al Azhar, Jamal al Azhar. And you know, Imam al Hajar al Asqalan, Khatimat al Muhaddithin, Akhir Amir al Mu'mineen al Hadith, Akhir Manshat al Ard, Min Amir al Mu'mineen al Hadith. He's the last person who reached the level of Amir al Mu'mineen al Hadith. What is Amir al Hadith? That not a single hadith that he doesn't know. The muhaddithin darajat, which is the first one. What is the darajat of the muhaddithin? 852. Yeah. just fresh now, the senses of hadith. So, he said, Abu Martaba al Muslim. Thumma al Muhaddith. Thumma al Hujja. Thumma al Hakim. Thumma Amir al Mu'min. So al the one who narrates the hadith with all the chain of transmission. And then the muhaddith, the one who knows 100,000 hadith with their Islam, memorized 100 hadith, 100,000 hadith. Imagine memorizing 100,000 hadith with their Islam. Until you keep going up, until you know that Amir al hadith is the one who knows every single hadith with the Islam, even the fabricated hadith. He knows the fabricated hadith, who fabricated it, and how he fabricated it. This is the fabricated, the light hadith. Imagine the da'if and the hasan and the sahih. They said that approximately there is a thousand, thousand hadith narrated on the Surah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. One million. Not, not, not fabricated. And the fabricated ones, they know now which, which, which are the fabricated ones. He knows all this. With the Sanad, and in which book it came in. It was like a full database of all the hadith. Imam al Hajar al was entering the masjid one day and he found someone who's doing something that apparently is haram. Apparently. And then he said, How can this sheikh and the door of, of the of Jamal al Azhar selling this stuff which is haram? He went. He went. He's the Imam of the Masjid. Allahu Akbar. And he forgot the Fatih. Imagine someone who memorizes millions of hadith with the Isnad and, and the Darajah of يعني, everything, a uh, full database. But not a single computer now has it, by the way. Not a single software or database. Still, uh, even half of Imam al Hajar al He forgot the fatih. Straight away he went and apologized and he asked, and he apologized to the person who was doing and then some other story. And then he found out that yes, the matter looked like haram, but in fact it was not. So even when you have a bad suddhan of your brother, what is the effect? But because he is a man at his level and his quality from Awliya, he pays the price straight away. When you have a glass of milk, Pure glass of milk, just one drop of ink in it. What happens? It becomes so obvious. But when, when the milk is already, when you have a glass of mud, muddy water and put a drop of ink, doesn't matter. When it is already a lot of ink and you put another drop, doesn't matter. It, it continues to have the even more darkness. Likewise, the heart. The heart, when it's so pure, one mistake becomes like a drop of ink. And because Allah loves this heart, He, he cleans it straight away. So a person makes a mistake and He pays the price straight away. In the case of Imam Hajar, he forgot the Fatiha on that part. Or He will. Whatever will happen, let's see. It. Yeah, Allah will purify him straight away. So he means Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, clean, pure, pure glass of milk. But others say they lied, or they made fun of, they belittled their brothers, or they have sued one of their brothers, or they mocked another brother. And he says, nothing happened to me. Because you can't feel it. Because your heart is already like a charcoal, another drop of ink, another stain. You don't feel it, but it actually became even darker. 
more disease came in. Someone's body is full of cancer, and I tumors everywhere. It was like 100 tumors. It became other than one. It doesn't feel. And this is the problem. So, you have to know that العلم بالضرر is removed. Every sin we make has got, has got complications. Whether you feel it or whether you don't. If you don't feel it, this is even a bad sign, more bad sign. When you go back and watch movies, you see nothing happens. The, the, my problem is, or the problem is not actually now the, the movie or the scenes that you have seen, that you have made. The problem is mainly because you didn't feel. This is a sign that your heart is already rusty and dark and black. So even more stains, more black stains, you didn't even feel. I said this example many times before. A particular suburb in Egypt, the people they work in tanning leather. And they use chemicals that are really, uh, I mean, the smell is terrible. This chemicals. So you drive, just by outside of the, there is a highway. But on the highway you smell, you can't, you can't stand the smell. So I always ask myself, how can the people live there? I can't even stand in the three minutes we are driving at 100 kilometers per hour on the highway. Speed limit is 80. So we're driving 80 kilometers per hour on the highway. At least the news. You can't even smell the, you can't even stand the smell. What if the people are living? And then I, I, I told you, when we have a traffic jam, after 10 minutes, I couldn't smell anything. Because I got used to it. When we, when we get used to the sins, we stop smelling. That's why sometimes you are at, at a certain level, you go and talk to someone, a lady, mashallah, a sister with hijab, full hijab, a beautiful hijab. She goes to and talk to another sister who doesn't have hijab. The, the sister without a hijab looks at the sister with a hijab as if she's crazy, as if she's extremist. Have you seen that she talks to her as if she's extremist? So why are you so extremist? Why you want me to wear hijab? So she can't even smell herself. What she's doing. And this is a relative thing. I met people, I met people, to them, I think, how can you stand yourself? How can't you smell yourself? People look at me here and say, Waqal, Walid, they say he's a sheikh, he's a scholar. But compared to some people, a sheikh, and now I have a bay of him. So there are 4,000 sunnahs of Rasulullah If someone knows that I left more than three of them, do not pray behind me. So if I left more than three sunnahs, he memorized the Quran was six years old. He says after he reached six, after he finished memorizing the Quran at the age of six, he said his eyes never, never saw something haram. And he's 83 years old. Never saw something how many things that I am his murid now, and he didn't accept any student for the last five years, not a single one. And I went and visited him, and he said that he didn't. And he says, his student says we don't accept anyone. So I told him, خلاص, I came all the way from Australia, and I'm leaving. It takes like 24 hours to drive to come here. I'm leaving. And then he said, wait. And then someone said, came and said, oh, he wants to see you. So I went, and he accepted me. And I heard all this. When I said, when I think this, how many haram things I saw. When he was six, finished the Quran. Next day, he finished the Quran. A lady passed, walked by. He was not wearing hijab. He did this. He looked at, he looked at, the, at his feet. She said, you are a boy, you are only six. You did not even reach puberty. He said, you reached puberty. And he walked away looking. And this is our tarita. is when you walk. You look down, you look, you look down at your feet. Proper So say when, you, when I compare myself to, to him, it is an insult to compare even, to think about comparing myself to the lowest of his students. So it's all right. So this is the ilm. And he knows that one of the worst things about the dham is that it's a barrier between you and Allah. Astaghfirullah. 
So the, the loop, when you do a seam, lots of complications, like no barak. Allah will take back the bark of your risk. You may earn lots of money, but man, it disappears. What happens? You're earning $15,000 a month. And I was earning nearly $20,000 a month. Where is the money to go? Let's go. You spend like 17, 18. And you can what? Just 17, 18 dollars. That was my state uh, 10 years ago. I mean, 20,000 $20, dollars a month. No bark. And then it's no bark and the children. Your children, like rebellious, they are bad akhlaq, bad mal, giving you really hard time. No bark and health, no bark and time. There's no productivity. You are not productive. You wake up in the morning and the day is finished, what you have achieved? One day in your life just passed. It was a waste, a total waste. And, and a day in your life is you, it's part of you. Because you are nothing except a number of days. When one day is gone, part of you is gone. Until eventually and inevitably, all of you is gone. Inevitably, you are finished. When? When you are finished? When all days, when your balance of days is zero. When you finish your last day. So every day passes. If you, are not, you do not make any profit or any win in this day, this day is a, a total waste. You should regret how many days you wasted. Not moving forward, not getting, as I said in the beginning, whoever doesn't move forward goes backward. And I'm saying for those who, if you, if a day passes, you did not move forward. What if in that day you moved backward? Actually, you, took, you start running the opposite way. People are running, racing this way, and they're actually running the opposite way. Like by things that you watch, first look, second look, third look, fourth look, and continuous look. First hearing of music and so on, and then you continue, and then you go to the next track, and then you go to the next, and the next, and the next, and so on and so forth. So, <clears throat> all these are problems of the sins. And what is even worse than the sins is not regretting the sins. There was a group of people who was given class, they, I know that Hali and they were. So one of the ways I, I didn't tell them, stop doing the sins. Imagine, I couldn't, I couldn't even say. I, but I started by saying, you know, what I want from you, if you, can, if you have to continue, at least feeling bad about it, regret it. Don't be happy about it. I want you to be upset or disappointed from yourself. Hate yourself because of this sin. Continue doing it. Not that I want them to continue. Plus, if, if, this, if there is no other choice, you can't really, you are addicted. Plus, you can't stop smoking, for example. At least with every cigarette, Regret that you are smoking the seal. Don't be happy with it. Yeah. And don't smoke and be happy with you so that you are smoking. At least, the first step, the first step, don't, don't be happy with yourself. And what is even worse is the hijab, is the barrier. Every single sin adds another layer between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. bal rana على قلوبهم ما كانوا يكسبون كلا إنهم يومئذ عن ربهم لمحجوبون سورة المطففين الله says in the جزء عام the last جزء سورة المطففين الله says the كلا بران على their hearts have become rusty because of the bad doings and the sins that they have committed and because of that they are ice or there are barriers between them and Allah even more barriers. Darkness over darkness, over on top of darkness, on top of darkness. So in this khalas, it doesn't see the nur with the nur of Allah. He sees by his black heart is his vision, is what he sees with. If Ida Ara Fadalika Marifa Muhakaka be a pin of Allah on a Kalbihi غلب على قلبه 
الاثاره من هذه المعرفه انا منتقصد فيها نستوب هير and we'll play Maghrib now, inshallah. And uh, after Maghrib, we'll have like 15 minutes Q&A. And then we'll, uh, we'll conclude, inshallah. Today we read one paragraph. The first shalom brothers and sisters with questions and answers until 8.30. Uh, if there are more questions and answers, then I'll ask you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, if we can have a sister in the uh, community who um, her husband left her uh, over a year ago, but they, they've done the, 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 form, the, the formal Islamic, I was the Australian law of divorce papers, they have not been the Islamic too. Is that, is that um, she wants to do it Islamically, but uh, he doesn't want to. So, what's the. Um, you know, and he has them. Uh, in this case, if the other party doesn't want to. SubhanAllah, we started the full fiqh of marriage and family law and talaq. And after I finished studying this, one thing I learned is never to give fatwa about divorce. So, don't ask me. <laughs> Yes, I teach it. I teach this fit. I study a little bit. I do a research paper about it. I study it out of my back. But one thing I've learned is Talaq. I teach it, but I can I teach you all the Ahkam of Madai. I don't want to fit on. I just want uh, your opinion on this one. I finished to go to the Mufti. Thank you. Thank you. Muhammad is the most of this country and his responsibility and his responsibility that he should take on. I'll pass it to you on the Alhamdulillah, we finished the Kelvin 14 to Hadith. Yes, so just, uh, just finished this week. Uh, one of the latest hadiths was about the um, uh, al bayat So uh, no, no, one, no Muslim should, uh, should have it to sell on the, the, the sale of, of his brother. Mm-hmm. And the question we had was about the Mazid. About the, uh, is, 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 if, if, if there uh, is a Mazid and there is a Muslim mm-hmm. involved in, in that, is that uh, correct? Uh, yes. Uh, Sorry, the thought of buying that sale? Not to eat that. This one is, uh, Mazid is different. It's not a buyer on uh, Because that's... Uh, What's the question? This auction comes under this hadith. But so Sam said, do not sell in the sale of your brother. Do not come if you are. And do not engage on his... Uh, do not sell against his sale. Do not engage against or do not offer marriage uh, against his offer. Like if, if you know that your brother is intending or actually went and asked for the hand of this lady, you do not go and say, look to her parents or something that pays more dowry or... We should abstain until something happens. If you don't go forward, ask everything is finished, then you can ask for the hand of the Lord. Likewise, the same. <coughs> but option, the option is a life, is a life form of everyone goes and they both understand that this is an option. This is different from you are going to buy something and then behind your brother, it's not about behind your brother or your back, brother guys are make other deeds. But when both of you are going and knowing that this is an auction, will be an open auction, this is where uh, it's different. Better with the questions related to the topic of the class. Also the sisters I think have a couple of questions. Doesn't seem to be questions. Just ask me if you have any questions. Um, 
صدقه جاريه ان اون جوين تشاريتي ان اون ذا بنصاري حيا دو لا ان راتشس تشايلد ات ليفز دو ارت مني سو في ليفز بيهايند ذا راتش تشايلد افري جود ديد اوف ذيس تشايلد وي جو ان ذا بوك اوف حسنات اوف ذا فادر ان Um, can you pay a sort of a dairy on behalf of someone who has passed, or would it be better to get? No, someone who who did a water well, who made a water well in in places like where I've been there myself in Kenya and in Somalia. Kids, kids, seven years old and five years old walk for three kilometers in extreme heat to find water, and it depends whether they find it or not. So when you go out and make a well and uh, water the well, that's a sort of a jari. Mm -hmm. And I, I tried walking myself with them. So that's a sort of a jari. I fought a lot. And this is something, inshallah, that I intend to do. I want to make a, a project, a lot project, huge lot project, where we stop uh, asking people for donations. We want to build our lot infrastructure. Inshallah, all the money coming from this alpaf and dedicated to the Islamic projects. Whether they are overseas, they are aid, or uh, sponsoring students of knowledge, or building schools, or buying up medical <coughs> materials. We want to build this lot infrastructure in China. And this is one of the things that I'm studying in yani the background. And with the Australian law, how to formate a trust, because a trust is not a lot. Trust is very close to a lot, but it's not a lot. So there are clauses that needs to be added to the trust deed to make it a lot. A lot? When someone, you say, I buy this, uh, this, uh, this unit, two bedroom unit, as a lot for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, means that forever this unit, all the income that comes from this uh, unit will go for orphans, for example. You can specify the revenue of the lot. Someone will have a farm. I said, this farm is now a lot. Meaning he dedicated it, dedicated for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and you can specify the purpose of the lot. Maybe this lot, all the revenue of this farm will go to sponsor an orphan. Or you even say orphanage in Somalia, or orphanage in Bangladesh, or orphanage in Egypt or Kenya or whatever. Or this what is for the students of Ali. Or the people who want to memorize the Quran. So that's ongoing sort of every every dollar spent is a mulhasat for the day of judgment. Every person who will learn Quran or every orphan that you sponsor him until he reaches uh, age of Rush uh, is a mulhasat for the rest of his life. And so on. What kind, of, what kind of running costs do you need to have up to be able to buy a place? You need to buy. Let's say buy, buy a place. Remember when the Ramadan announced that I want to buy a masjid, but as a unit trust? Mm. Then people, that's all. Yeah. That's all. But, but the, so you want, you want to basically have all the costs covered for, say, uh, uh, Muslim aid? And then every dollar goes into the profits. The profits of the cash would go every dollar would go to the needy. Yeah. Yeah. So what, what would what, what would be the running costs? Like we talking about two million dollars. Uh, would need to purchase the need to put restaurants, shops, units, business, buildings, offices, warehouses. Buy these assets, make them up, and all the revenue of these assets. Will, will go for uh, Islamic purposes. Orphanage, plus uh, this warehouse will be for that orphanage in King and Darbatulu. The profits get distributed to beneficiaries and they make the orphans and whatever. Yes. For people who work in Zakat, so also eventually, uh, employees who work in the Zakat, right in the of the Zakat uh, company, they are not touching the Zakat or Salah part that they receive. Or the other one, they come from the office. And that's an ongoing, ongoing chart. Like sponsoring the student to buy, uh, sponsoring a work for the exam, and so on. And then eventually, when this grows, 
we start now building masajid and building uh, infrastructure that we are never want to part. This is the way it should work. And this is how it will become sustainable. Uh, sustainable uh, yes, another question. So if the person has already passed, um, is it possible to do it on their behalf? Yes. Oh. yes. Um, I've got some references question. Um, when you were saying um, returning from sins, um, returning from sins to do, um, do good deeds or stopping doing good deeds, um, what was the right practice that you used? Or was it uh, from doing good deeds to do better deeds? Well, no, no, no. Oh, that, that's a web who is a better person who may not do, coming from bad deeds to good deeds, but is coming from a certain level of good doings to a better level of good doings. So this is the web who returns to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not necessarily from haram things. We return to him from shortcomings in good doings to a better level. Ni'mal abd innahu a web. The Surah Saab. If you want the verse, it's my It is in the second page of Surah Sal on the top, the first day on the top, second page on the, the top. No, to cover to cover his sin, that was the story of Musa when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala covered his the, 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 the sinner. Is, is that ah, this is the story I mentioned? Mm. Ah, that's the story of uh, Musa, Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam with the children of Israel. One of the story. Okay. And it's not in the Quran, okay. it's in Hadith. Sheikh, can I ask a question in regards to saints? You mentioned that it's better to honor someone who gave their life than those who are living but have a dead heart. Um, I mean, in light of what's happened recently um, and you know, from discussions with some people who are very close, close to us, <laughs> there's a bit of a... Um, People look at mosque, which has graves of awliya in, in a bad light. Of course, these people do strange things, but what is the what is the ruling on graves and mosque around? Not necessarily mosque being in the graves, but generally the the uh, graves of the awliya. The Masjid of Rasulullah three graves. In the mosque. No, no way that the salah. You offered your ayah behind you just to be yes. in the salah. Yeah. And call the Dina Golabu Allah and Rehim, then at the Kidon Alayim, Masjid, Surah Al Kaf. The people of the Kaf when they died, they said, What do we do with their graves? They said, We'll build a masjid around them. 
والله سيدات الصوت بكم Discussing amongst themselves as to what I wanted to do, mm-hmm. or was that a commandment from from Allah suggesting that that's what? Okay, there's a ishara here. If Allah Subhanahu wa Taala said that this is why Allah said it's such a thing, and nothing, no story in the Quran, no statement, just from Allah. Every line, every word, every statement, every ayah for a reason. So there's something that we learn from it. If Allah said they discussed among them and they decided to take a masjid in it. And Allah was doing that in a praise, and He praised Him then. If it is kuf, Allah would have said, and that's a matter of kuf, that will Allah leave it? He said something like this, and He will leave it, He will not tell us if it is kuf. Hasha lillah. It's not befitting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to mention something kuf, and He does, does leave us. But what is haram? Is to prostrate to the grave. To prostrate, to take a grave, as a place of worship to prostrate the grave. But if the grave is, is in the complex, but no one is, is prostrating or making sujood to the grave, then it's not haram. Shalom, in, in Egypt in particular, unfortunately, and the people do so, so many, yeah. many offers. They go yes. and they, they, they do mas'ah on, on the grave and they ask by the, the person. But even a mas'ah is haram. To go and wipe the hand on the grave, it's not haram. If you love someone, if you love your kid, you, you, you hug him. So if they're doing it because of mahabba, habib habibi habib. That's the word. 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 That's the or think that the person in the grave the controls, he can bring this kind of shark by himself, just by himself. We, even if this is the case, we differentiate between the kufr and the kaf. Not everyone who's doing an act of kufr is a kaf. Uh, someone is doing it and he does it with no intention. You cannot label him as a kaf. He's out of jack. Most of those who do this are people who can't even read or write the simplicity of mind and yeah. So they are not careful, you cannot label them careful. Although they are doing an act of kufr. But but you have to teach them and tell them that actually the person in the grave does not directly control anything. Indirectly, yes. Indirectly, he brings you high. How, how, how a dead person or a, a salah person for the life of death indirectly uh, brings you high? Can a person indirectly bring you high? Benefit you? Of course. Definitely. Just by Qala Rasulullah al Mar'u ma man ahab. The person is Sahih al-Bukhari. The person is with whom he loves. So if you love Imam al-Nawi, if you love Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi number one, if you love the Sahaba, Abu Bakr al-Siddiq, wa Umar, wa Uthman, wa Ali, if you love them, wouldn't you have said if you love, you are with whom you love. Wa fi riwaya, yuhshar al-mar ma'ma ahab. A person will be resurrected with, the, with, the, with those he loves. So if you love Sayyidina Abu Bakr, if you love Sayyidina Umar, Sayyidina Ali, Ubay ibn Ka'ab, Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, Imam Hassan al-Basri, Imam al-Ghazali, Imam al-Nawi, Imam al-Bukhari. When you love these people, maybe your deeds will not help you because they are full shortcomings, and, but because of the love of these people, sincere love, and trying to follow them, you go with them. Allah will take you with them. So did they benefit you or not? They benefit you. Also, you see, when you read the seerah of a salah person, and then do, don't you feel something? When you read about salah al-din al-ayyub, don't you get better? <coughs> Jesus, Allah, inshallah. Why do we have to teach our children the seerah of Nur al-Din Zinki, Yusuf ibn Tashafin, Abba al-Salam, Muhammad al-Fatih, 
Sorry, dear uh, Yudi. Why would you have to teach them the stories of this great man? And of course, the story of uh, Sayyidina Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is here. Why? Because when you read about them, your head map grows. When you know that Imam al Nawawi, this Imam, for two years, he did not put his side on a bed, he did not sleep. The sleeping city. You sleep for this. Then you wake up and you continue work for two years. And how he was eating, he was getting the flour, putting in water, and then so there is no time to, to, to eat and chew. And then when you eat, you have to go to the toilet and see how much time is wasted in the eating process. So he was just uh, putting the flour, his mother putting the flour in water, and he drink it, and that's it. No time was in sleeping or eating. That's why in 43, he died 676. Uh, the amount of production that he produced in 42 years, that's a book. He explained the full Sahih Muslim. I think it will take us our whole lifetime to read it. Not to understand it, just to read it. Imagine understanding it. Imagine if you want to compile it, if you want to write such a book. Because you don't just sit and write. This is the ilm and he wrote and compilation and planning through the book as a full manage. So the planning of writing this book, you can take one, one full year just to plan. To make the plan of the of this of this when you write a book, you don't just go and write, right? Anyone is the author of the book? Authoring the book, the planning phase can take more than writing the book itself. I authored three books. The planning phase took me more than writing the book. The book itself took me six months to write, on average, each book. Took me one year to plan to write it for the book. Which chapter I started, how I organized the data, which information I collect, how do I organize this information, what result I should focus on. We make a khutbu al in When you write, you have to. We have a full subject in Azhar called Manaj al Bahr. And if you don't know, research and, and write. How to write thesis, how to write a book, how to write papers, research, etc. So the planning phase takes a long time. So in 42 years, he did all, and I'm telling you just one book. You know, Riyadh al Salihin? Everyone here knows Riyadh al Salihin at home, right? Imam al Nawawi. Al Arbain al Nawawi. Imam al Nawawi. Al Majmu'a Sharh al Muhadr. Imam al Nawawi. 27 volumes. Each volume is 700 pages. When did he write all this? So, sir, when, when you hear this story about such a man, Allah, you him, you feel that you, you are, and so on and so forth. So that's why just learning and doing and visible the salihin makes your him goes up. You, you, you definitely return as a better person. How many of us just after Ramadan in Taraweeh, when we get a good sheikh and a good qari and a good hafid, you see, mashallah, his hibs is, how many of us said, I want to memorize Quran? So that happens to us for months. When you go to pray with Sheikh Omar, mashallah, five Jews a day, he doesn't touch. He doesn't do this. Straight away, we said, man, I want to memorize the Quran. And maybe after Ramadan, you start to just, just by being in an environment, helps. الصحبة لها من صاحب الصاحب ساحب ومن جالس جالس. He says, صاحب is a ساحب. That your friend will always take you with him. Tell me who's your friend, I tell you who you are. So if your friend is a salih person, doesn't that affect or benefit you or not? Do, don't the same birds with the same feather fly together? Or on Jalasa, Jalas. Whoever you sit with, you become like him. You get paid to do the same time. So, so does it benefit or not? Definitely benefit. Definitely benefit. Don't you know that the dua of a Salih person helps you or not? And this Sahih only an Adilla Sahih. Dua al Akhu li Akhi. الدعاء الأخي لأخيه بظهر الغيب مستجاب الدعاء of a brother to a brother behind his back is, is accepted 
Imagine this person that if he's a Saleh person, if he makes dua for you. So all this adilla from the Sahih Hadith tells us that definitely the Salihin definitely helps you or benefits you, but indirectly. Not that because they control, they, because they can create good or bad or can put you in Jahannam or in Hellfire, not, not because only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does it. But Allah said, if you love whom I love, I'll, I'll put you with them. When, they, when the good people make dua for you, I'll accept their dua. So that's why we have to go and search for the Salihin. There's one advice that I can give you to be in the right environment. Struggle, always be in the right environment. Choose, hand pick your friends. Choose them and always be in the right environment. Surround yourself with the right people. Otherwise, why? Because he will take you with them, inshallah. Now, my Abdul Dalim, I said, I said, I said, I said, I said, I said, يا ويلتا ليتني لم اتخذ فلانا خليلا. الله سيد في سوره الفرقان يوم ما يعد من الفرسان بايت هيز هاند وسيد اي ويش اي توك وذ رسول الله باث اوف رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم اي ويش اي توك اي ديدنت تيك سو اند سو از ماي فريند. This is the all of us on the day of judgment the hand of all of us or those who took who take bad friends bad company. We will bite the hands and say I wish I didn't take so and so as my friend. Or as my other company. Helps or not? Helps. By all this ahadith sahih and the Quran. Imagine if they are bigger than that. This is the last year of what um in Surah and Mushak fifteen, he said the house has become like two because the Mubarak. And what was the ayah that you quoted? رانا على قلوبهم. In the second page, or the like second or third line, the second page. سويت ليه متأكد. And um, when you mentioned the three essences of tawbah, you said hearing, hal, and applying it. الفعل. فعل. وقال إنما تفهم التوبة بثلاثة معاني. To understand the توبة by understanding three meanings or three stages. Number one is understanding and knowing what is it. And number two is having an internal state. تحقق بالحال. And then number three, acting upon it. إلا الذين يس إلا الذين تابوا وا وآمنوا وأصلحوا. كيف أصلحوا الفعل وآمنوا الحال. وتابوا المعنى في الفعل. التوبة نيفر كيم في القرآن باي سيلف. إلا من تاب وآمن وعمل صالحا. إلا الذين تابوا وآمنوا وأصلحوا فأولئك أولوز توبة أن عمل. توبة أن دو. ذا سيم ذا مين أندرستاندينج أند ذا أكشن دوينج ديفرنت. دوينج ديفرنت. إف يو باك باي ذا براذر كريستيان هاف تو ستوب. يو هاف تو جو أند Mention any good thing that you know about him in the same gathering that you you met with you met with him. That's it. خلاص that's it. جزاك الله خير. سبحان الله بحمدك نستغفرك ونتوب إليك ونشكر الله إلى 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 اللهم اغفر لنا كان من سلم يوم الخطأ وجعل بين سكوت وجيد خلصنا وجيد الكريم صلى الله عليه وسلم